Hello, and welcome to my lecture on sentence structure. I'm Ashan R. Hampton. What is a sentence? A sentence expresses a complete thought. A sentence must contain a subject, a predicate, or a verb, and complementary phrases to make logical sense. The subject is who or what the sentence is about. The predicate contains the verb or the main action that the subject performs. So in order to have a complete sentence, you must have a subject, a verb, and things that come after the verb to complete the sentence. Let's take a look at an example of a simple sentence. Vera laughed. The subject is Vera. Remember, subjects are nouns, and nouns are persons, places, or things. The predicate, or the verb, is laughed. Remember that the predicate starts with the main verb within the sentence, and then everything after the verb is the predicate. Remember, a verb expresses action or a state of being. Here's another example. On the beach stood Mary and John. The subjects are Mary and John. Because there are two people mentioned, we call this a compound subject. The predicate phrase is on the beach stood. Now I want you to notice this inverted sentence structure. Typically the predicate would come after the subject or towards the end of the sentence. But in this sentence, the predicate, which includes the verb, is at the beginning of the sentence. So it sounds a little odd to us to say on the beach stood Mary and John. We prefer to hear it this way. Mary and John stood on the beach. Now it's easier for you to see that the verb is stood and that stood on the beach is the complete predicate. Remember the predicate starts with the main verb of the sentence and in this sentence the verb is stood. Carl fried the bacon and scrambled the eggs. Mm. The subject is Carl. Why? Because he is performing the action. He is the one frying the bacon and scrambling the eggs. So the predicate is fried the bacon and scrambled the eggs. Remember fried is the first verb and the main verb in this sentence. So everything starting with fried all the way down, fried the bacon and scrambled the eggs is what we call the predicate. We have a compound verb in this sentence, fried and scrambled. But in order to find the predicate, you start with the first verb, then make your way to the second verb. I want you to notice that when you only have two things mentioned, fried and scrambled, you do not need to put a comma before the and. Okay, let's move forward. Let's talk about compliments. A compliment is a noun, verb, or adjective that gives additional details about the subject or the action of the sentence. Compliments are generally placed after the verb within the predicate. Generally means they're supposed to come after the verb. Compliments can consist of one word or a phrase. Okay, let's look at an example to put all of this together. Donna quickly became irritated. Okay, Donna is the subject. Quickly is the adverb became is the linking verb in this sentence. So what is irritated? Irritated is an adjective. It is an adjective that gives more detail about Donna's state of being. How is Donna? She's irritated. So notice that irritated is the adjective, which is the complement that comes after the verb became. Okay, another example. Rodney sprinted toward the finish line. Rodney is the subject. Printed is the verb. Now we have the complement toward the finish line. The finish line is a noun that completes this sentence. 
Without it, we would just have Rodney sprinted toward. What did Rodney sprint toward? The finish line. So remember, compliments complete the sentence and gives additional e detail about what is happening in the sentence. In this case, the finish line is a noun that functions as the complement in this sentence. So in the first sentence, the complement is an adjective. In this sentence, the complement is a noun. The lion learned to jump. Okay. Okay, lion is the subject, learned is the verb. It is the main action of this sentence. So what is to jump? Yes, to jump is the complement that is acting as a verb. To jump is an infinitive phrase. It is not the main verb of the sentence. So in this sentence, to jump is functioning as a verbal phrase. What do we mean by verbal phrase? We mean it is not the main verb, but it contains a verb jump, which is functioning as a complement. Okay, you might want to pause the video right here to let all of this sink in. Okay, let's move forward. Another type of complement is the direct object. Direct objects are nouns or pronouns that receive the direct action of the verb. A direct object usually follows the verb. So here's the sentence pattern. Subject plus the verb plus the direct object. And notice that the direct object comes after the verb. Okay, notice the color coding in this sentence as we move through this example. Allison saw a play last night. Allison is the subject. Saw is the verb. Well, what did Allison see? A play. Therefore, play is the direct object because it is the thing that Allison saw. So play receives the direct action of the verb saw. Bob easily unlatched the gate. Bob is the subject. Easily is an adverb, just FYI. Unlatched is the verb. And gate is the direct object. Why? Because what did Bob unlatch? He unlatched the gate. So gate is the thing that receives the direct action of the verb. Few companies sell stock directly to the public. Again, companies is the subject. Sell is the verb. What do companies sell? Or what do few companies sell? Stock. Stock is the direct object because it is the thing that is sold. Another type of complement is the indirect object. Indirect object, the person or thing to which or to whom or for which or for whom the action is performed. Indirect objects come before the direct object. So here's the sentence pattern. Subject, verb, indirect object, then the direct object. So the indirect object comes directly after the verb and before the direct object. So here's the sentence pattern. S V I-O-D-O. -O. Okay, let's look at an example. Margot handed the interviewer her resume. Margot is the subject. Handed is the verb. Now, what did Margot hand? Let's look at the direct object first. She handed her resume. Resume is the direct object because it is the thing that was handed. Now, who did she give the resume to? The interviewer. Therefore, the interviewer is the indirect object. It is the person to whom something was given. Okay, let's look at another example. David gave the professor a bad evaluation. Oh, we hate those. David is the subject. Gave is the verb. Now, what did David give? A bad evaluation. A bad evaluation is the direct object or the thing that was directly given. Now, the professor is the person person who received the bad evaluation. Therefore, the professor is the indirect object. Tina served her sister's grilled cheese sandwiches. Okay, Tina is the subject. Served is the verb. What did Tina serve? Grilled cheese sandwiches. Very good. Who did she give those sandwiches to? Her sisters. Her sisters is the indirect 
object which answers the question to whom. 